I've been thinking about how will society prepare for a new human condition and and by that I mean protecting future human rights for not only longevity but body mind ownership and the evolved humaneness generating a humanitarian approach to the fusion of technology and biology requires open-minded observations, obviously, first-hand primary sources, one would think, and foresight. Without this three-point approach, insufficient levels of scrutiny use and default to binary thinking that puts us at extremes. Yes, no, right, wrong, good, bad. These false sense of certainty by these binary options breeds factlessness, misconceptions, misconstrues data. And it's very important that we be educated as, as clearly as possible today, largely due to um, the future and what might become of artificial intelligence and robotics and our human bodies and our minds. So in short, there's no time to waste. No time to waste on weak defensive stances and arguing issues that obfuscate the core means to delivering a more humane understanding of humanity and steering or helping to steer AI and the fusion of AI or machines and bodies in a direction that is healthy and, and wise and beneficial for all humanity. So rather than binary thinking, the um, spectrum of changes we face requires a diverse spectrum of thinking about social issues that we face. And there are five points that I think stand out largely for me um, across the board. And I notice when I, I do a lot of interviews uh, for journalists, I have to be very careful about how I preface what I'm saying because it's often misconstrued. And in academics, as most academics know, they we're supposed to be using primary sources, but oftentimes I find that my students and when reading papers, they're um, more opinionated, taking the ideas and switching them around to prove a particular point within the rhetoric that fits their department. So I think we need to be aware of this. And um, the five points that I think that come up the most are an aim for perfection, but perfection is not the answer. It's fool's gold. What we want is a continuous process of learning and growing and aspiring to and achieving. Humans are driven as a species innately by our imagination, thank goodness to our frontal lobe and problem solving. Perfection is a red herring. It takes us down a slippery slope where we do not want to go. It is an non sequitur. It is something that only appears in lore or fiction or in, in assumptive thinking. Perfection is a no way out. We want not perfection, but to continue growing and learning and acquiring um, the beauty and the sensibility and the humaneness uh, that is mostly desirable. The second point is living longer, longevity, or living indefinitely. Is it feasible? It most certainly is, as long as one wants. And then we have to consider what is life itself. If the singularity does appear and we upload um, into computational systems or some other substrate, then there'll be a continuance of identity. But let's think today about protecting life and considering what longevity means. Um, beyond the maximum lifespan. Um, but we can't do this without nanomedicine, artificial general intelligence, and a backup plan of possibly um, human cryopreservation and a future human body. And an example of that is Primo Post Human that I designed many decades ago as a premier or, or a, a seminal future human body design that integrates with machines. Now, what I face too in the third point here is the social prejudice. In my view, and perhaps this is just my supposition, but I am looking objectively as possible, most of the prejudice is against people who want to live longer and perhaps change their bodies or have alternative bodies. Um, this is within the anti-aging sciences and technologies um, that 
are based on, through the transhumanist perspective, and most of us within the longevity community want evidence-based science and want ethical use of technology, especially ethical use of AI, as much as we can build that out. The, um, the prejudice about longevity, uh, individuals or transhumanists or those who are looking at a possible singularity as a positive thing or maybe help steer it in that direction is that we're selfish or elitist, there's the haves and the have nots, that there's this um, homo, um, 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 sense of lack of concern about the environment and an anthropocentric view about all species. Well, the fact is that this is incorrect. That's never been part of the agenda. It's certainly um, been discussed for eons within the longevity and transhumanist community that it's important to consider the environment we live in, no matter what that environment is in the material physical world or in the computational world, that it be as healthy as possible for all life forms to coexist in a synergistic sensibility. So I wanted to make those points because I think they're very important. An issue about who's in control is largely within the governance of AI and, and humans and, and rights, human rights about our bodies and ownership. But we need to be aware that robots, whether they have any sapience and sentience, and whether or not they're used as worker bees or whether they do develop a consciousness that could be different than our own, um, we ought be careful about calling them servants or slaves. Um, there ought never to be servants and slaves in this modern world of realizing um, how humanity um, has learned from the prejudices of the past and the biases. So no human or machine ought ever to be a slave or a servant, unless you know, they want to be, of course, but you know, that's individual choice. Regarding governance, and this is my last point, Every person is responsible for protecting their, their information, their knowledge. And, and we say, well, if you go on the internet, you're not protected. My cybersecurity students have said this over and over again. And it's true. And people say, well, what is going to happen in the future um, with morphological freedom? And if a person chooses to upload or integrate with AI, won't that mean that the AI could uh, as far as Eli had stated early, early on, that yes, it could look at it, but let's remember Eric Drexler also talked about molecular manufacturing and runaway AI, and that if everything is comprised of molecules, those molecules could be broken down and built back up in all sorts of ways. So these are issues that we need to think about. There's a self-responsibility here. It's not just the governance of those in charge who are making the parliamentary rules and laws and legislation. We all need to be involved in it to know the consequences. And lastly, we need a new human condition. In considering that our responsibility lies largely within ourselves and the decisions we make, and that type of self-ownership is really important. But we do need to rely on those who do have the information that we can use to help make better decisions. So where do we get the truth? How do we decipher the opinions from the, the facts? So that is that factlessness that I mentioned earlier on that usually arrives from binary thinking, which is a default. It's an easy way out. Um, it's a lazy way of thinking. But it's also innate. It's part of our fight or flight. Regardless, we need a new human condition. So in closing, technology is ubiquitous in the ontology of transhumanism. Today, AI and robotics reaching on AGI and tomorrow, nanorobotics. The aim is to be better educated with lifelong learning and to admit when we don't know, to admit when we make a mistake, and be willing to keep on learning and growing. And that I think is essential to a future human condition.